Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be stitching out this really great font that I just discovered. Really cute, I love it. There's lots of different versions of this font. Um, this isn't something that you could kind of like do on your own. You actually kind of have to buy the font. I'll put the link on the description below. Um, you know, there are several different types of styles of this font, but this is called a shadow font and it has it in different types of styles, as I said. And um, one of the things that I'm going to do is I want to show you how to manipulate this so that it can stitch out a lot quicker and so that you can also change the colors a lot faster too. So I'm going to show you where I'm planning on putting this on. Okay, we are over here at my cutting table and these are the towels that I just love. Okay, they're called Turkish towels and i'll put a link in the video description below as to where i get these towels from i am actually um been doing a lot of swimming classes and one of the things that i love is that these towels are really nice and light but i don't want to lose my towel so i am trying to put all my names decorated on this this is called the um uh, sh uh what is it uh shadow this is the shadow font the one I'm actually going to do is the one I previously showed you, which is the stacked font. Now, um, this font, I actually purchased like this, but you know, I do have a video on how you can create your own shadow fonts, and I did that right here, okay? I did that using this script, and I created my own little shadow fonts. Came out really cute. I'll also link that video on the description before below if you guys are interested in knowing how to create your own font this way. So this is actually the towel that I am going to put that font on. I think it's going to look really nicely on here and um, I'm going to put it right above right here. I want it to scatter among these two. But let me go over to the computer and I'm going to show you exactly how to work with that font. Okay, guys, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start a new, fresh uh, page, okay? So I am going to click on here and just create a brand new one, and I'm actually going to reselect the font so that way you guys can see what I'm talking about, about using the color sort with this font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to add my text, and I'm actually going to select my font. Now, as you can see, I do have a lot of fonts in here, so I do have to kind of like scroll a little bit. There are two styles of fonts that um, I found in this shop that I thought were really cute, part of the um, shadow font family, and I'm going to show you both of them. This is called the micro um, stacked font, okay, and as you can see, when I click on it, these have more of a solid view, okay? So I'm gonna make this a little bigger so that you can see, okay? So I don't know why that's moving. Hold on, let me just put this right back in the middle. And let me click on this. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties with my Mac is just like acting up like crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. All right, so here we go. So as you can see, you have it a little bit, Um, you know, these are all solids, okay? Now I'm going to, right here, I'm going to type something simple. I'll just use three, three letters. I'll just do mom. And as you can see, this is how mom looks. It looks really, really solid. Okay, but I also want to show you another font and I'm going to hit new page again and I'm going to select another font because I want you guys to see this other style as well. So is because there are several uh, styles that I found and I wanted to show that to you. Um, let me see where is it and this one's called stack. I'm going to do three inches. And I'm going to type mom, and I'm going to do it the same, all caps. And you know, 
one. Let me pick a little bit bigger. There you go, so that you guys can see. This is a different type of what we call stacked uh, font. And what it is is that you have like the middle and then you have all of these that are stacked on the side. This is kind of cute because, you know, it has a little opening, okay? Now I'm going to click on the other one. You can see the other one has a more solid look, all right? It has like a more solid look. So it just depends on whichever you want to use and stuff. They have a different types of variety of fonts. So, but like I said, I'll put the link in the video description below. That way you can see the one that I use in this video. And also while you're there, you can also browse around and see the other types of fonts that they have as well. They have a pretty nice, nice collection. And so, so anyway, let's talk about how um, we're going to work with the colors on this. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is, as you can see right here, when you look at the colors, it's like you have one color here in the middle, and then this is kind of like a split mom, right? And it has one color. It's split again, has the green, and then it's split again, has the yellow. Now, I'm going to highlight over here, okay, I have the color. Now, as you can see going down here, you can see that these colors kind of repeat itself, right? It goes blue, light blue, green, beige, blue, light green, green, beige, and so forth, right? So what it is, is that it's actually going to stitch out these colors at a time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here where it has the... um stitch simulator so that you guys can see what I'm actually talking about. Now I'm going to run this so that you guys can see this. So as you can see right here, this is the blue color and it's doing this color first. Then it's going to do this um, blue and then it's going to do the green and then it's going to do the yellow. Okay. Then right here, as you can see, it's starting with the the dark blue again then the light blue so the way that you know as you can see right now okay the way that this is stitching is it's doing one letter at a time okay it's doing one letter at a time so it's kind of like it starts to stitch you know it starts to stitch and you know it's it's just uh it does the colors all at one time, but it's like one letter at a time. So to me, this seems like a little bit kind of time consuming, okay? So, you know, cause like, see now here it goes the blue. Now it's gonna do the light, the light blue. It's gonna go at the bottom, then it's, you know, then it's gonna go to the top. Then it's gonna do the green and it's gonna go at the bottom and then it's gonna go in the top. And then it's going to do the, the yellow, right? But it's like, it does it all each color at one time. Now I wanted to do one color at one time, you know, and just, and then just go to the next color and then the next color and then the next color. So how would I go about doing that? Okay. So the way that I would do this is that under in in brilliance, you have under utility and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see Okay, you see right here, right underneath the cursor. I know you're a little crooked, but see how it has color sort? Okay, now before I hit this button, I want you guys to really pay attention to this little box right here, okay, where I have all these different colors in here. All right, I want you to pay attention to that. See how we have all these different? Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on color sort. And then what I'm going to do is right here above, and I'm making this big so you can see, I'm going to click on new view. Now, once I selected new view, what it actually did was it ended up color sorting everything. And then it, it kind of like recreated the file for me. Now, this is what I'm going to do now. As you can see over here, my cursor is over here and I'm going to hit that down arrow and as you can see look at all the steps it has it all together okay now and just let me let me scroll this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see how the steps look now okay these are all the um 
dark blue. These are all the light blue. This is all the green. And then this is all the yellow. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay? All right, so now let's run the, stips, the stitch simulator again. Okay? And better yet, before I run the, stips, the stitch simulator, let me show you another great feature about doing this color sort. I'm going to go to the other file that I didn't touch. Okay? And let's look at the colors. Now, as you can see here, I have the same problem, right? I have like all these, the, all the colors all stitching out. Let's say that I want mom to not be yellow. I want it to be pink, okay? What's going to happen is each of these is one step, right? So if I go and I say, okay, I want mom to be pink pink and I highlight that yellow and let's say I pick the pink right now when I hit okay I only have that one M right here at the bottom and the top that turned pink so I have to go into this box right here and I have to select all the yellows and make them pink okay so that can be kind of time consuming so let's go to the one where I did the color sort Okay, so this is the one where we did the color sort, right? So, once again, here goes jumping. All right, let me move this here. Hold on. So, I want to make sure you guys can see everything. This is like super sensitive here. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, remember how on the other one it had a certain color and I said, I want to make this pink, right? All right, but I want all of mom to be pink on the top and on the bottom. So what I will do in this situation is I click on here, okay? And this is the yellow, the yellow mom. This is the top and the bottom of the mom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on color, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my pink because I want it in pink. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now look what happened. Because all I had to do was select that portion, select my color, and automatically all of the top and all of the bottom changed hot pink. It's not the same like the one we were looking at previously. Okay? Where when I went and I changed this color, it only changed the first. Okay, because if you look on here, everything is repetitive, right? So then if I want to change this and this to be pink as well, I would have to go to the next yellow down here. And then I would have to click on that, hit color. I mean, well, the color popped up. <laughs> and then right here, I would go ahead, select the pink. And as you can see, it's just these two, right? then the top and the bottom that I would have to go back and hit here change that to pink and then this would change to pink let's go back to the one that I just did the color sort as you can see all I did was click on here this portion right here okay opened it up and it shows all the different steps right when I scroll down right you get that little thing you get it all here and then I got all of these little steps. So right there, all I have to do is just highlight it, select the color, and it will all automatically change for me. Let's do this again so you guys can see exactly. Now, I have this in pink. Let's say I kind of like the green. I'm going to leave that here. Look at the light blue. Let's say I want the light blue right here to be um, yellow. I'm going to pick yellow for that because I think that'll look cute. So I am going to select this step right here that has the light blue in there. And then I'm going to hit color. And what color did I say? I said yellow, right? So I'm going to click yellow, hit OK. And as you can see, all of it came out yellow. As for the mom, I can just go here 
highlight the mom and what in in uh here we go again i don't know why i keep doing that all right that's let me go here all right i'm highlighting mom that's this one right here i'm going to color and i don't know let's pick a nice one let's see um i'll pick a nice uh purple there you go that looks cute there you go so see that is a, a very nice thing about using the color sort in a brilliance because this actually saves you time instead of selecting every object individually to change the color if you go ahead and you click uh select color sort and you do new view it opens it gives you a new file where you can easily change the colors more um more easily you know more faster and so this saves you a lot a lot of time okay now let's look at the stitch simulator and let's see how this would actually stitch out okay now remember when we looked at this originally what it was doing was it was stitching this first this first and this okay the first the top and the bottom top and the bottom top and the bottom and then the middle right but now we've color sorted this so it's going to stitch a little different let's see so i'm going to click on stitch stimulator and as you can see it's going to stitch the middle first which is mom then it's going to do the yellow all the yellow then when it's done with the yellow okay and it still does bottom top bottom top bottom top but it just doesn't, there's no, there's less, uh, you know, it doesn't go up and down. It's going more, you know, up and down, but across kind of, you know, it just does all the, the purple first and it'll do all the yellow. Now it's going to do all the green, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, all the green. Then it doesn't have to go back to the green thread anymore because it's all done. Now it's going to go to the pink and I'm going to keep scrolling and as you can see there you go and then you're done and then you're done ain't that pretty cool so you know color sort can really be a handy feature for you to use um you know to when when you're trying to uh, create your embroidery files now let me give you a little caveat though something that you need to be careful about okay now let's look at this design a little bit deeply here okay and this is the reason why i want to um bring this to your attention is because i don't want you to go crazy out there and think you can do color sort on every design out there okay as you can see each of these are independent of each other none of these little objects kind of overlap one another right now what i mean by overlap is this m does not go on top of any of the threads here or here at the bottom okay they're very independent each object's independent when you are in a situation like this color sort works however though let's say that you um let's see Let's look at another design that I have up here, and I'll tell you this is not where you want to do color sort. And I'm trying to click on this. My Mac is really acting up. I want to bring up uh, another picture. Okay, there we go. All righty. Now it's going a little crazy. All right, so let me go back to this one. Or the flower. The flower is the best one. Okay. Let's look at this design right here. Would I do color sort on this? I tell you no. And I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes what happens is these, as you can see, some of these designs, they kind of sometimes overlap each other. Some of these stitches might overlap. Now, the thing is, 
when you're looking, especially in the flower area, okay, when this is stitching, and I'm just going to do this, the simulator really quickly so that you can see, okay, look at how this is doing the little green thing, okay, see how sometimes you can have things, little, you know, little jump stitches between, okay, now you have the, the pink. Now, look at the flower. See how the flower kind of overlaps a little bit on top of the green? Not much, but it does a little bit on the sides, okay? If you do color sort, you may end up having the green stitch on top of the paint, and you can end up messing up the design. So if you have threads that kind of overlap, okay, Sometimes there's a reason why certain colors have to stitch at a certain time in the design, okay? But if you have something like we were looking at the font earlier where you saw that the uh, threads were independent of each other, the objects were independent of each other, and my computer is really slow. I got to figure out what's going on. Um, then I would say like this very independent notice how this does not like even like bump up close to any of these okay see how the fonts don't even like there is some spacing they don't need there's no bumping up color sort in this situation thumbs up perfect okay highly recommend it okay so anyway, I just really wanted to explain that. I know it was a long explanation. Please bear with me. I'm just a very detailed person because I like to teach that way because sometimes, you know, a lot of people can get confused. So now that I have this font kind of like the way I want it because I really like the picture. I think it looks cute. I'm actually going to now stitch it out on my beach towel. So let's see how that comes out. Okay, everybody, here I am at the machine, and as you can see, I loaded my font. I do have it upside down because I do want it towards the end of the towel over here, okay? I'm not going to use my um, my quilt board right now, you know, the um, for the blankets and stuff. This towel is extremely light. It's not really heavy or anything like that, so I'm going to, um, you know, just embroider it as is, see how it comes out. When I look at this, it looks a little bit on the small side. I think I should have picked a bigger font, but you know what? I'm going to leave it as is, and let's see how it looks. I already changed all my threads, okay? So I'm going to use this purple, this um, nice green. I have my pink. I have my yellow. have it loaded on my machine. So I'm going to now hoop the machine right now. Like I said, this towel is extremely light. There's like hardly any weight to it. So I'm kind of like, I don't really need the board. So I'm just going to hoop this in here. There we go. And get this out of the way. And I'm going to do a return. Because as always, like I said, I like to do the scanning. So I always hit the little camera. So that way I can scan and see where the design is going to actually land on this uh, towel. Okay. Let me see this little light there. So let's see what it says. Oh, okay, yeah, it is a little bit on the small side. I should have made it a little bigger, but that's okay. I mean, this towel is for me, and I did just pick the mom. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to leave it as is, okay, because this it's going to look really cute, and I do kind of like it that it's kind of like in the middle of both colors also. I think that gives it a little pop, you know, something different. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to start the machine. Let's embroider this, baby, and let's see how it comes out. I think I'm really going to like this font. All right, so here we go.
Okay, it is finished, all done. And I have to admit, I really like the way this turned out. Let's take this out and let's go over to the cutting table, okay? Okay, guys, I am I'm bringing it over to the cutting table right now. And let me lay it on here. I still have it in the hoop. Oh my goodness. Let me lift it up so you guys can see the outcome. And I have to tell you something once again. This font's gorgeous. I like, I like the texture that's on here. It's like little squares. Let me try to make it bigger so you guys can see. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Now, one thing though. I, and this is has nothing to do with the problem with the font, okay? Because the font comes in different sizes. I should have used a bigger size, but, you know, I just wasn't sure how, how it was going to look. But, I, you know, if I had to do this all over again, I would have made this much bigger. So I'm going to take this out of my towel so that you guys can really see how it looks. Let me put my... um my hoops away and stuff because I don't like to have stuff thrown thrown all over the place um here's the old towel and stuff this is from the same folks you know they did the uh the shadow well this is uh mm. oh I forgot what this is oh my god I'll put it in the video description guys I'm just having a moment I think this is uh Oh, man. Brain fart. You know what happens? Sucks when you get old, right? You know? <laughs> anyway, but look how it came out. This came out really nice. It, it's from the same comp from the same um shop. I got this off an of Etsy shop. And I really like the designs from this Etsy shop. They have different variations, okay? So if you don't like the wood, you know, the, the block, they have different kinds, okay? Just like um we were looking at. Um, the fonts earlier on the um, on the computer, they had different style fonts. So you don't have to like just get this type, okay? There's different varieties of different fonts. But I wanted to give you another close-up. Ain't that pretty? I like it. I really like it. I think it's really cute. And you know what? This font looks gorgeous on these towels. I really do like the way they come out. Um... I'll put a link on the video description of where I got these towels. These towels are really nice for the summer. Let me put this on here on the hoop so we can take a another good look at it. Look how cute. Look how cute. Really nice. There's so much you can do with this too. This is this is really nice. You could put this on a bag. Um nice beach towel, make it bigger. Okay, you could even put that on a shirt. And you know what I was even thinking also? You know how you do, um, you know, initials? I, 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 I don't know if I'm saying it right. I think it's monogram, you know, where they put the initials. You could do initials. And, you know, and this is really small enough because it's not that big. Because, look, this is my hand. I have small hands. And as you can see, it's really not that big. I picked the smallest font that of the set. But they, it comes bigger. But, you know, this would look really cute with the initials, you know, with the person's initials on a nice bag or something like that, you know. So, anyway, guys, hope you like this video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. And, as always, thank you so much for watching the channel. And I really hope you enjoyed watching me do this. I mean, I really like trying out new fonts. I And, you know, this is definitely a really nice I really like the way it pops. So anyway, guys, like I said, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do embroidery happy hour every Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I always talk about different topics about embroidery, sewing, um, you know, and even running an embroidery business. So I will talk to you guys later. Happy sewing and happy embroidering. Bye.